Anyone who spent the night in the tent with a mosquito can attest to the impact that a small organism can have on a much larger one. That's the analogy that Forest Service Associate Deputy Chief State and Private Forestry Vicki Christensen used in referring to the relationship between the U.S. Endowment for Forestry and Communities and the USDA Forest Service. The partnership between the grandfather of federal natural resources agencies and a small nonprofit that has existed for less than a decade is truly achieving shared goals. At the endowment, we sum up what we're about in two short phrases, keeping working forest as forest and advancing family wage jobs in rural forest communities. In a just released report that highlights the reach of the partnership between our two organizations, we look at what we're doing together to advance both the endowment's goals and three of four of the agency's strategic priorities. In a time of burgeoning challenges on one hand and declining human and financial resources on the other, it's more important than ever that you and we build effective partnerships. To put those challenges in perspective, we've invited the first Chief of the Forest Service to join us as we highlight the breadth, depth, and results of some of our efforts to date. We appreciate you joining us today. Delighted to be here. As a former two-time governor of Pennsylvania and the first Chief of the Forest Service, how do you prefer to be addressed? Well, as a forester and regarding what I consider my most important legacy, they called me Chief then, so I guess you can call me Chief now. Chief, we couldn't agree more with that important legacy that you left for the American people. In your day, what were the top two or three most important challenges that you and your peers faced? Well, there were many. First, I'd say getting Congress to go along with President Roosevelt to reassign a large portion of the public domain to national forests and then getting the people to go along, mm -hmm. especially those exploiting it. Managing the lands for future generations. We could not continue to take without putting something back and forest fires raged unchecked, we had to reduce the losses. My generation can never thank you and President Roosevelt enough for the legacy that you left that covers over 200 million acres today. You know, I'm amazed that over 100 years later, some of the challenges you faced during your day are exactly the same challenges that we face in modern America. In your day, the challenge was to avoid exploitation and set about a, a scientific management base for those forests. Today, the pendulum has swung even more wildly to those that question whether we should manage the forest at all or just simply let nature take its course. And sadly, while for many decades we get, did a great job of controlling wildfire losses, over the last three decades, with each decade, losses have doubled. But in our case, those fires today are driven by things that weren't even on the radar in your time. First, heavy buildup of materials from lack of management for a number of decades and a changing climate that served to exacerbate drought and extend the fire season on the other. Hmm. Those were indeed challenges that we didn't have in my day. Chief Pencho, as we only have a few moments together, I wonder if you'd help me walk through some of the things that our small nonprofit and the U.S. Forest Service are doing together to address many of those challenges that we just discussed. Well, I'd be honored, but I can tell you in my day, uh, the idea of a non-for-profit entity working with a federal agency was something not even imagined. I'm looking forward to seeing what's afoot. Well, let's start first with just a high-level summary of the range of works and then maybe go back and look at one example within each category. Sounds good. Let's array the initiatives in what Chief Tom Tidwell calls the agency's top priorities. You know, I'd like to meet this Chief Tidwell. I've heard many good things about him. Let's start first with what we're doing to sustain forest. We're looking at the potential of modern genetic science as a response to exotic pests and diseases. Secondly, we're exploring the potential of 21st century products from woody cellulose at the nanoscale. Thirdly, we're considering the potential of a World War II technology, torrefaction, essentially roasting wood, to provide a market outlet for low value wood while meeting green energy needs. Fourth, we're looking at how we can conserve working forests in the face of explosive development in the southern United States. Fifth, we're creating the first ever database and online mapping tool for conservation easements across the nation. And finally, we're working to enhance collaboration between state forest and state wildlife agencies. I feel like I've awakened from a long sleep. These terms you use, like uh, nanotechnology. Uh, please elaborate on that if you could. We'll do that, Chief. In the delivering benefits to the public strategy, we're about four things. First, doing what we can to link drinking water and water management authorities with forest conservation. Secondly, we're just beginning to explore the potential of forests to help the Gulf of Mexico recover from a tragic oil spill. 
We're working with African-American families who own forests to engage them in advocacy for forest ownership and management and use of those forests as an economic stepladder. And finally, we're looking at ways to deploy modern wood to energy to advance America's local energy needs. Well, I think I followed that part. At least I don't feel like an alien. Chief Pencho, you're surely no alien, but things are getting more complex and challenging as time passes by. Finally, we're working to help people understand the place of wood to energy in forest health and management and facilitating cross-border collaboration between Canada and the U.S. to address forest health challenges. And finally, we're attempting to identify pathways forward for our heavily embattled forest products industry. That's quite intriguing. Those initiatives seem very important, especially to advance the overlapping objectives of the endowment and the Forest Service. Chief Pencho, there's a lot more that we could review, but I think it's time that we bring this overview to a close. For those who wish to dig a bit deeper, we have a companion report, Mosquito in the Tent, that's available online at this address. In less than a decade, the U.S. Forest Service has committed $13 million in partnership funding to the endowment, which we've matched with almost $25 million in our own funds and added another $12 million in partner cash and further leverage for an impact of more than $105 million. I must say, you're giving it the good fight. That a lean organization like the Endowment has accomplished so much great work in such a short period is mightily impressive. Those of us who broke ground to create a legacy that today is far beyond our wildest dreams, we salute you and all the fine men and women who make up the U.S. Forest Service team. Chief, we can't thank you and your peers enough for your vision, tenacity, and commitment to the generations that followed. You set a high bar and those of us that walk in those footsteps give you thanks. Likewise, we at the Endowment can't say enough good things about our colleagues at the Forest Service, both in turn for helping us get our feet on the ground and for the trust and partnerships that have emerged. Chief, again, we thank you so much for spending time with us as we explore our developing partnership with the USDA Forest Service. It's my pleasure, Carlton. I'm happy to be here. Thank you.